peut dire que c'est bien parti. Et comme d'habitude, aux environs de H-1 minute, les portes latérales seront ouvertes et vous pourrez assister au lancement. Merci de votre attention. Mesdames et messieurs, bonsoir en direct du Centre Spatial Guyanais, ici à Kourou, Guyane française, Amérique du Sud. Voici le vol 139 d'Ariane Espace. Je m'appelle Brad Klein. Je fais le commentaire pour vous en langue française. Avec moi en cabine, Jacques Bousseau. Bonsoir, Brett. Bonsoir à tous. Heureux de vous retrouver ce soir pour des commentaires techniques. Pour l'anglais, audience, greetings to you wherever you may be and welcome to Kourou, the home of Ariane, for tonight's live broadcast of Ariane Space, flight number 139. I'm Joshua Jamble for the commentary. With me in the booth is my friend Pierre Michele Rovera. This is a summary of the events of tonight's launching. First, the preparation of the launcher itself, an Ariane 44L, putting into geostationary transfer orbit two military telecommunications satellites, the Italian Sicral and the British Skynet 4F. We will have a quick look at the final preparations of the satellite in the green room here at the GNA Space Center. Then, of course, comes the launching and the step-by-step -step process of putting the satellites into orbit. So, while I wait for Josh to climb in the booth, uh, just a few words in my mother language. Un saluto a tutti gli italiani in ascolto e una buona serata e un buon lancio. Ci sentiamo dopo. Uh, this is the green panel. Here in Jupiter we check the systems, uh, not only the launcher of the spacecraft, but all the systems we need for uh, this mission. And as you can see, it is not all green. We have a red on the Skynet spacecraft. So normally we'll have a little delay. Uh, we are still waiting for uh, more information. We will keep informed as soon as we have it. Hi, Josh. Greetings. Climb back. 50 seconds to climb back into the skybox. The launch window for tonight's event is one hour from 1900 hours 28 to 2028 local Kuru time. The launch will be broadcast in Washington and in Sunnyvale, California. The launch is also being broadcast in Stevenage and Portsmouth in Great Britain, in Rome, Italy. And of course, at Ariane Espace headquarters in Evry, outside Paris. Tonight's launcher is the heaviest and most powerful of the Ariane 4 family, the 44L. It stands 56.3 meters tall with the fairing and includes four strap on liquid boosters. The 44L weighs in at 486 tons at liftoff. Right, we're still waiting uh, for the red on the satellite to go green again. Uh, Pierre Michele, you're not happy with that figure, the 486 tons that we just saw. No, in fact, it is a little mistake. The real mass is 478 at ignition, which is uh, 74 at uh, liftoff since uh, we burn four tons in the ignition sequence. The ignition sequence lasting roughly five four seconds. Four seconds. Four seconds. We'll get back to that when we uh, come down to uh, ignition time, because there's a whole series of events and checks before the launcher takes off that we want to uh, describe to you. For the moment, we're going to go to the launch summary to give you a better idea of what's coming up. Tonight's Ariane 44L launching is placing two military telecommunications satellites into GTO for the Italian Defense Ministry and for the British Defense Ministry. Seacral is the first Italian military satellite constructed by the CTAB Consortium for the Defense Ministry. The consortium is headed by Elenia Spazio, the satellite builder. Then Fiat Avio for the propulsion and launching systems and Telespazio for all ground installations. Over to Great Britain now. Skynet 4F was built by Astrium in Stevenage for the UK Defense Ministry. It will control all tactical and strategic telecommunication services in the UK. It is part of a family of three satellites with the 4D and 4E. 
Ariane Espace has already launched three Skynet satellites in 1988, 1990, and 1999. The Italian sea Kral will be placed over Congo and the British Skynet 4F over the Gulf of Guinea, both in Africa. Just under 14 minutes, we're still holding. This part of the uh, status panels is green, as you can see. There's the red on the satellite. As soon as we have anything to pass along to you about the status of the satellite, we will, of course, do so. In the meantime, take a look at Rami Koshe, one of six Ariane Space mission directors. Coordinates the campaign among Ariane Space, the customer, and the space base, working in tandem with Pierre Bardier, the dean of the DDOs, what we call the range operations manager, who coordinates all the information coming in from the different sites across this very large, very vast launch base. One of those sites where we happen to have a camera tonight is at a place called the CDL, the Launch uh, Center. They are about 13, 14 kilometers roughly toward the northwest uh, from where we are here in, in Jupiter the CDL. You see the uh, launch operations manager. They're, they're up there about a, about a kilometer from the launch pad. Is that right? We are about 15 kilometers from here. And they are and just one kilometer from the launch vehicle. And his people, uh, the CO, uh, the COELS people, there are 100 or 200 of them, checking out only the launch operations. Only the launcher operations, yeah. The COEL is the real pilot of the launcher in the cockpit, the CDL. The Jupiter building the Jupiter building is the control tower. The launch campaign 139 began here with the arrival of the first stage container at the Cool Harbor. After transportation on the pad number two, we have integrated the third stage on the launch table. This is the first day of the campaign. The second day, we integrate the second stage, which is hoisted here, and it docked with the first stage. After these two days, we begin with the integration of the forced liquid strap-on boosters. They are docked here with special cranes on the central core. Finally, the third stage is hoisted on the same way and integrated on the launcher. This is completed by the vehicle equipment bay that you see here, which is actually a plate containing all the navigation systems of the launcher. After this operation and uh, electrical and fluid checkout of the launcher, we have here the rollout to the launch pad. The launcher arrives on the umbilical tower and we close the cryogenic filling device, which is used during the countdown to fill the third stage with propellant. This phase is completed when the gantry is moved back on the launcher. At D-5, the satellite arrives. They are encapsulated. You see here Sucra and Skynet. They are hoisted at top of the launcher at D-4. And only at D-4, the launcher is completely integrated. The, the, voice. the voice of Remy Cochet, the uh, mission director, giving a rundown on the launcher campaign. There's one for every launcher. And... Uh, normally taking about 25 to 26 working days. The men from uh, satellites. We have uh, Michael Callery, which is uh, the program director for Secral from the Aryan Space Directorate, Commercial Directorate. Now his job being a commercial person is to be what? He has uh, the management of the contract the launch contract after he signed Maura Tili, which is a secret uh, manager. Have, have we any news on the satellite? Well, the controls, further <coughs> controls and operations are running in these very minutes. Uh, we will keep you informed as soon as we have some more information about this little delay. So they're doing the normal checks? They do normal and further checks, checking again uh, all the systems on board and on the ground as well. Well, as soon as we have something, we will, of course, pass it along. Uh, the launch base here in Ariane Space taking every precaution, 1,001 things to check out before the vehicle will be authorized to leave the pad, of course. The security of the people in the base, uh, the first thing, the people in the local population, and of course, the ground installations here, primary importance. So everybody making sure everything is ship shape before we take off. 
And we just saw uh, Alex Madembasi, who uh, is the mission manager, Alien Space for, Secret, for Skynet, who was very busy at the moment, <laughs> since he's uh, uh, working very hard. Just uh, wh while we're looking, uh, a thumbnail, you can still see the red there, we're still waiting, in eight minutes to go. A thumbnail sketch of the, longer, of the launcher, if you just, uh, if you're joining us for the first time for the, uh, for the mission, three-stage, three-powered vehicle, there's Ariane's chairman, Jean-Marie Luton. And uh, in the meantime, we just have the final uh, weather forecast for the launch window, and we are green over all the windows. We're so green to go. The last, the final weather check comes at minus 10 minutes. Minus 10 minutes, yeah. Take a look now at the latest news from the Ariane Space Company. That's coming up. Sir. Last year was a vintage year for Ariane Space. We tied our record for launches with 12 but also the Ariane 5 came into her own with four successful flights. So Chairman Luton had lots to talk about at the first of the year press conference. Among the announcements, four more contracts signed, three old friends from three different nations. DirecTV 4S, built by Boeing in the U.S., will be launched at the end of this year or early next. That's the third in the fleet launched by Ariane. Inset 3A and 3E will also go up later this year and next year. These telecom and weather sats are built by the Indian Space Research Organization, the ninth and tenth contracts with Ariane. Finally, Israel Israel's second communications satellite, Amos-2, will bring digital TV to the Mideast and be a backup for Amos-1, launched by Ariane in 1996. Ariane Space's industrial partners got together early this month in Paris for industrial days on the program, development, production, and further evolution of the Ariane family. On January 10th of this year, Ariane Space unveiled its new logo. This is an integral part of the revamping of the graphic image of Ariane Space. As you can see here, this new logo has basically evolved from the one we've used for the first 20 years of the company's life. It was easily recognizable. The change today is soft but quickly noticeable. The evolution of the logo, in fact, represents the transition from the Ariane 4 to the Ariane 5 launcher, which we're currently bringing on the market. This uh, transition is based on our SADA launch experience over the past years, and uh, the new launcher fits very well with the current telecommunications environment. We're using our vast experience to benefit our clients. Right, we're coming, we're coming down to the six-minute mark, which is the beginning normally of the synchronized sequence, what we call the automatic sequence. Now, what happens if we get to the six minutes? We, we can't go past that if we have a red. No, normally if we still red, uh, we will stop the count on uh, minus six, exactly, since the last six minutes are uh, a computer program we, you cannot interrupt. And if you have any problem during this phase, you automatically go back to the minus six minutes, which is a very important phase, and uh, you have to run it fully. And you can see we've just stopped at minus six minutes. And uh, at the beginning of the synchronized sequence, we have not got the authorization to move into the automatic sequence where the computers take over. As soon as we do, we'll give you, of course, an explanation of that because it's a very <coughs> interesting procedure, the final moments of this final countdown.
Radio Zeledeo, donc les deux projets ont demandé la prolongation de l'arrêt pour une reconfiguration de leur réseau de stations. Tous les moyens doivent se tenir prêts à partir de 23h TU. Je répète, tous les moyens se doivent d'être prêts pour une reprise de décompte à partir de 23h TU.
Well, you can see we're still waiting in this run up until uh, 8 o'clock, another quarter of an hour. We're going to uh, offer you this unexpected look at some of the scenes and situations related to the launch base. Uh, we're going to have another film coming up for you shortly. The pictures of the boats are interesting because uh, parts of the Ariane 4 all come from Europe. They're not manufactured here. So they're uh, shipped across the Atlantic. And there are now two rather large ships of uh, one million and some pounds, I think, if I'm not mistaken, who bring, which bring the, uh, the stages over for the Ariane 4. For the Ariane 5, it's a little different. Most of the parts come from Europe except for the solid boosters, which are made here, right? Yeah, you're right. The solid boosters uh, are made here in what we call the UPG, which is the Guyana Proper Gold Factory. And uh, well, it's the first time in the program that any part of the launch vehicle was, was actually manufactured here on the site, because before everything came over from Europe. It is the first time. Well, really, they were too big to be transported. All right, have a look now at some other shots, and we'll be back uh, around 11. Nous avons un rouge Cicral, rouge en attendant que le réseau de stations soit reconfiguré. Dès retour au vert des deux satellites, nous engagerons la séquence de redémarrage.
de l'EDO, retour au vert du satellite Skynet 4F, des retours au vert de Sicral, nous engagerons la procédure de redémarrage. Tous de l'EDO, tous les moyens se tiennent prêts pour une reprise du décompte sur très court préavis. All right, all right, all right. I think, I think we're going to be ready to go. You see the Skynet has gone back to green. The Sicro, the Italian satellite, went red, which was normal, they tell us, because everything was being reconfigured, reconfigured up there. Yes. In fact, uh, when there is a, a long delay like this evening, uh, you have to reconfigure the spacecraft according to the ground tracking station for the new exact time of ignition and lift off. because obviously we've changed we've changed our uh, this takes uh, some time so the red is just normal because they are reconfigurating the new launch time so the ground stations asked to have a little more time to yeah. set their to apparel. set uh, the new parameter and uh, we should turn green in a few we moments we should be going now now we have a launch window originally of, of what was it an hour yeah, you're right. Now we have just uh, 28 minutes, less than half an hour. To launch, but of course we only need six, so we should be all right. Yeah. So we're waiting for the DDO, whom you will hear, to announce the synchronized sequence commencement and the uh, return to green from the Italian satellite. Meanwhile, as you can see, Ariane 4 waiting patiently, like we all are, for her orders to go. And that should be forthcoming. As we said, you'll hear this man, Pierre Bardier, give the orders. The orders come to him. The go or no go from the satellite comes from the satellite people to him. Is that right? It's relayed. What? He is uh, the overall manager of everything happening here tonight, so uh, he has uh, the synthesis of all the systems needed for the mission, and of course the spacecraft is a very important one. Dave Cross, uh, the man with the mustache in the center of your frame there, Astrium and Skynet, he has uh, no doubt been busy on the phone the last uh, 15 minutes, but apparently they found uh, the problem and fixed it. So we're waiting now again for the Sicral, as you can see, which is green, the Italian MOD bird, to go back to its green configuration. So all the panels will be green and go for launch. And at that time, we'll pick up with the synchronized sequence, and the clock will start ticking again down to liftoff for tonight's flight number 139. The Jupiter building here, you can see there are two parts. You're looking down into the fishbowl where the uh, technical operational people are. The uh, European space effort, a three-way affair between Ariane Space, the European Space Agency, and the French Space Agency, CNES, all these people are down in the uh, fishbowl at their computers, along with, of course, the customers, the Sicral people, the Astrium people, the uh, CITAD, CITAB. CITAB Consortium. Yeah. CITAB Consortium. The Jupiter building here went up in 1996, was used for the first time in 96. Uh, this is the second mission control that we had. We had another one which uh, was used from flights 1 to 81, I believe. And this Jupiter 2 went up for the Ariane 5 program. First flight, Flight 82, 1996. The old Jupiter building now, very different, used now for, uh, I think, some tracking. They've split it up into uh, two parts. I don't know what they're doing now. Well, the old Jupiter 1 was uh, v very little, and uh, especially for VIPs and uh, guests. It was not so easy. There wasn't much in. room, yeah. And we launched from the fourth floor of the building. Yeah. That's where the uh, where the Near computers the roof, were. So it was uh, very good for seeing the, the launcher flying. 
This one is good too because the people you might see them at about. Atouz de Léo, tenez-vous prêt pour une reprise sur très court préavis. All right, he says to get ready for a uh, re relaunch of the countdown very shortly. So, very shortly, you'll hear Pierre Bardier call out. The, uh, we started to mention there are some observation posts, there's some uh, terraces outside of this building. And sometimes you see the people, uh, the VIPs who are here in, in Jupiter, start to get up and move out with roughly two minutes to go before launch, minus two minutes, minus a minute and a half, start to go outside. Because they can watch the launcher pass, well, I've never seen it. I'm told it passes overhead, is that right? I'm always in here. It is not really overhead, but uh, since uh, it flies in this direction, you have the impression it's coming towards you. In reality, there is a, a maneuver, which is called the dog leg, which uh, is uh, in charge of uh, putting a right trajectory to avoid the launcher flying over Kourou, which could be uh, a problem in the case of an accident, a major accident. It's one of the uh, reasons why the Europeans chose the space base here at Kourou. I think there were about a dozen candidates from Norway, to, from Scandinavia to Australia to, to, build, Australia. to build the site. Yeah, West Indies. Yeah, when they started looking at... At tous de l'EDO, retour au vert du satellite Sikral. Well, Attention pour le début de la séquence synchronisée de lancement. There we have it. Pierre Robardier has announced the passage into the synchronized sequence. You can see the clock ticking again in the corner of your screen. We are green and counting down the final moments of this final countdown. All's well that ends well after that long wait. Gives us a chance to tell you all about the synchronized sequence now, which is uh, also called the automatic sequence. The computers basically are taking over. Power is passing from the ground control onto the launcher itself. Yeah, well, the two computer systems, uh, which are in the launch center number two, where the COEL and his team are, one for the electrical systems, the other of the fluid ones. And here we have uh, some images of uh, the gantry withdrawal, the one main operation in the final chronology, taking the place at five hours and a half before the ignition, the liftoff, when all the manual operations on the launcher are over, and before starting uh, the cooling and the loading of the third stage, of course. This is done. This was done about six hours ago. These were, these uh, shots were shot uh, in the afternoon. You can see what the weather was like this afternoon. Cloudy, but uh, no problem. One of the last major operations, because, as we mentioned earlier, we're 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 still filling up until minus five minutes the uh, third stage, with the liquid hydrogen and oxygen, and the launcher, which is normally inside the tower should be outside of course the launcher the must be area. outside while uh, you fill up the third stage the uh, cdl the teams at the uh, launch base again going through their final checks and verifications on only launch procedures this is a group of 100 or so people or 200 people only working on launch processes correct yeah correct and this is the place where the two famous computer systems are that you started to mention please One carry on of the electrical system, the other for the fluid and pneumatic, in charge uh, this tonight especially of the third stage topping up and checking off all the pressure parameter needed. And they have uh, both uh, a checking control and we have the satellite image of the weather for tonight, so uh, you can see no problem, no thunderstorm risk over Kourou and on the trajectory, so this is why the weather uh, is green for all the window. We don't have uh, a weather red. We don't need another red, we already had one. Yeah, and that's enough. Yeah. So a thousand and one checks going on on this uh, very complicated launch vehicle. All are vital signs being checked out by these two computers, yep. fluids and electrical systems, which Checking. are located up in the CDL where we Checking on one side and making actions on the other. Uh, that is to say, both fluid and electrical. At this time, the loading of the third stage is over. They are making the pressurization of the tanks. And uh, from the electrical side... The uh, image you're seeing now, we want to just to take a minute and point that out to you. This is the, as you see, cryotechnic arms, or the propellant feeder arms, which you mentioned earlier the liquid hydrogen and oxygen, the 10 tons of that fuel going into the third stage, which has, uh, which the filling, of which the filling stopped at uh, minus five minutes. 
This image uh, is important because it's the last thing you're going to see before liftoff. These uh, feeder arms, if all is go, at about minus, what, five seconds, they will swing open. And if they don't swing open, we don't go anywhere. They must open for Ariane to lift off. And we see Mario Ciampini and Amelio Galauchi. The uh, coming up on two minutes. Now you can feel a little bit of the uh, excitement and the tension in the air. I'm looking down into the uh, on the VIPs and they're watching as everybody here is the green status panels, which continue to tell the story. At under two minutes, we are green and we are go. The uh, synchronized sequence also authorizes. And we have David Cross and uh, Robert Hanville. The Astrium. Uh, Skynet people. Synchronized sequence also uh, loading the exact ignition time into the computer, is that right? Yeah, since it is the ground computer giving the relay to the onboard system and uh, for the guidance system especially we have uh, the servo motor starting and the inertial platform unlocking just nine seconds before the ignition time. Right, just, just a moment at one minute now. You'll hear the DDO call out the one minute mark. At two zero zero, attention for H minus one minute. Top minus one minute and count. All right, we're into the final seconds of the final countdown. Flight one thirty nine with two military satellites aboard. Just very briefly, the the uh, what what you'll see the feeder arms will swing open, and you'll see the motors firing on the first stage. But the launch will not go anywhere immediately. What happens? It happens that uh, in the ignition sequence, we check the engines uh, starting to the full power for about four seconds, and everything is okay. if everything is okay, we give the release order for big hooks opens, release the launcher, and we have the real liftoff and in we positive lift time. At about plus four. At seconds. about plus. 4.4 seconds. All right, you're going to hear the DDO call out the final 10 seconds. À tous de DDO, attention pour le décompte final. And we'll let you watch that. And we'll be back after Ariane has cleared the tower. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, unité, feu. Allumage. Décollage. the launcher uh, rise into the sky. We're 30 seconds into the launch now. You saw the uh, four main engines burning and the four boosters were burning. We've lost Arian in the cloud cover. You, you, you saw before the shots of the gantry withdrawal. It is a little Tous les paramètres bord sont normaux et la trajectoire est normale. But the trajectory and everything aboard is normal, says the DDO. Did you notice something falling away from the launcher? Seemed to be some cladding. There's a nice shot of the launcher tracking through the clouds, coming in and out. Did you notice the, uh, there was what looked like some parts of the outside that were falling away? That's quite a normal occurrence, yeah? The little things you saw falling at the liftoff, it is the thermal protection of uh, the second stage, which is just foam plus uh, aluminium, just to maintain it at right temperature while waiting on the pad. So it is normal to lose it. The parameters bord sont normaux and the trajectory is normal. All right, everything is normal. You can see on the left hand of the screen the cursor, which represents the launcher, climbing up the normal trajectory path at one single point of light now. The four main engines are still burning, the four boosters are burning. The boosters... The parameters bord sont normaux and the trajectory is normal. The boosters will burn until roughly plus two and one half minutes. These four main engines using a lot of fuel, about two point two tons per second. About a million, about a million pounds of thrust. A million pounds of thrust and 250 kilograms each engine. So in the eight engine we have two tons per second. Two minutes and Arian has already reached the speed of sound. Uh, yeah, we are already supersonic. Uh, in fact, at one meter and a half, uh, we have the transonic phase with the maximum dynamic pressure. 
On the left-hand side, you see the uh, cursor crawling up to the mark SEPPAL. That'll be the separation of the liquid Extinction boosters, des propulsions d'appoint ergol liquide. Which have just been burned out. There's the DDO. Separation des propulsions d'appoint. So we have just separated the boosters. They are going to fall back into the Atlantic. This will give you an idea of what happens. Les paramètres bord sont normaux et la trajectoire est normale. They are separated by a power technical device. They fall down in the Atlantic and uh, they sink. But this, the separation sequence also opens them to avoid uh, them to float, which can be dangerous for uh, the ships. This is the way we want them to fall down and, and to sink in the ocean. Coming up on the cur on the uh, panel, you can see step one two. That's separation of the first and second stage. That'll be forthcoming. Tous les paramètres bord sont normaux et la trajectoire est normale. Everything is fine on board. We mentioned earlier that um, the Kourou site was chosen. One of the main uh, reasons were, was that the, we can launch to the north and to the east over the water, so there's no threat for uh, local populations. That was a very important criteria. Du premier étage. So the propulsion of the first stage is over. Separation du premier étage. And separated. Allumage du deuxième étage correct. All right, we're into the burning of the second stage. You can see in the drawing how that happened. Second stage burning one single engine. First stage again dropped into the Atlantic. Tous les paramètres bord sont normaux et la trajectoire est normale. Where it will sink in the drink. Sep coif, you see, that'll be the fairing separation. DDO will call that out. Largage de la coiffe. All right, now the uh, separation is separated now. We're about uh, 126 kilometers up, as you can see in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen where it says A, 129 kilometers, that's the altitude. We can see the altitude and the velocity coming in this moment. They come directly from the telemetry from the launcher. La trajectoire est normale. Everything is right on board, all parameters correct. The uh, fairing is separated now at this height because we don't need it to protect these satellites anymore. Yeah, we are outside, practically outside the atmosphere, so we get rid of all the masses uh, which become That's useless. That's right, it, it weighs, uh, what is it, 750 kilos? Uh, tonight is about 650. Tous les paramètres bord sont normaux et la trajectoire est normale. It depends on the, on the ferry, it is between uh, 500 and 700 kilograms, so it's quite uh, very big mass in the, uh, on the payload. Pierre Mosva, director of the Guyana Space Center. Fairing protecting the uh, satellites from the Earth elements. Of course, we're in the, uh, above the atmosphere. We don't need it anymore. Payload pollution, that's what we call it. Avoids payload pollution. At five minutes and 40 seconds, roughly, the second stage uh, burnout will be called by the DDU. You can see SEP-23 on the on the chart, that's the separation. Tous les paramètres bord sont normaux et la trajectoire est normale. The uh, second stage should take her in roughly to... Uh, Extinction du deuxième étage. Second stage burnout. Separation du deuxième étage. Separation, second stage. Allumage du troisième étage. All right. Les paramètres bord sont normaux. The third stage burn has begun. This is the long one. Area and speed now over five kilometers. That's per second. That's about half of the speed we need to separate the satellites. Yeah, you're right. We are almost at the good altitude. Uh, now it's about 200 kilometers. At the end, we'd be uh, 239. So in this phase of flight, we really need the energy from the launch Les vehicle. Les bord sont normaux et la trajectoire est normale to turn into speed. Acquisition par la station télémesure de Natal au Brésil. Didio has just announced the acquisition of our first downrange tracking station that's over the border in Brazil at Natal. That's an ESA facility there. Yeah, and in uh, about two minutes, we will lose it from the crew station since uh, the launch vehicle will be behind the horizon. We are uh, traveling at... Uh, Five and a half kilometers per second. We're at 220 kilometers up, and we're in the beginning of the third stage burn. A long one, 13, 14 minutes, uh, burning the uh, 10 tons of liquid hydrogen and oxygen that we mentioned, which is the uh, space sector's most effective and efficient and most powerful fuel. Is that right? 
Oui, il y a cryogenic euh, propulsion. In, in Les paramètres bord sont normaux. La trajectoire est normale. It's very powerful. Well, indeed, you could use a fluor. Satellite technology applied to telecommunications has made possible the use of advanced systems for multiple, diverse uses. The fundamental aspect of today's communications to ensure the harmony and equilibrium of planet Earth is security. Today, military communications have a new ally, CQREL. Built by Alenia Spazio, the main contractor of the CTAP consortium, with Fiat Avio and Telespazio. Undoubtedly, the use of innovative solutions makes the strategic system both valuable and competitive in terms of performance and able to meet the requirements of the Italian armed forces. Seacrow performs numerous tasks. It is characterized by flexibility, low operating costs, and adaptability to changing operating conditions, especially appropriate in emergency conditions and peacekeeping missions. The system capability has required the design and development of transponders able to operate in three bands. EHF, UHF, and SHF. The SICRAL system is composed of the space segment and the ground segment, which consists of the Mission Control Center, a Vigna di Varia, and over a hundred user terminals. The system is characterized by mobility, safety, flexibility, and high performances. The spacecraft was designed and built in the Alenia Spatio facility in Rome. It will be put into orbit by an Ariane 4 launcher from the Guiana Space Center in Kourou. Presso il centro di Vigna di Valle, il satellite viene gestito e controllato in orbita, mentre i vari sottosistemi elettronici e informatici sono costantemente monitorati e tenuti sotto sorveglianza. Nel centro, All SICRAL systems are monitored and controlled by the mission center in Vigna di Valle. Their links have been developed to integrate military satellite resources with traditional telecommunications. The different terminals, which can be mobile, fixed or portable, can be linked together through the satellite. Mobile terminals can be installed on aircraft, ships or ground vehicles. In addition to Elenia Spazio, the prime contractor in the CTAP consortium, 150 European and American companies have participated in SeaCraft. With the spacecraft positioned in geostationary orbit at 36,000 kilometers from Earth, SICRO will allow video, phone and fax links over a wide geographical area. 
The system, built according to international standards, guarantees telecommunication compatibility with the armed forces of other nations, in particular within NATO. Right, well, you know the sick crawl story. We'll get back uh, with a little more on sick crawl. But for now, since we have another seven or so minutes uh, in the third stage, when we have a little time, we want to go to the moment that you've all been waiting for, the area and space quiz question. And we have Mr. Miniti, which is uh, Under Secretary Undersecretary of, of Defense, Italy. So, Mr. Minister and everybody else, here's your quiz question for tonight. Area and space question, <clears throat> excuse me, number 139. Now, you know, we've launched... Tous les paramètres bord sont normaux et la trajectoire est normale. We've launched about 14 times with military payloads. 14 military launches since uh, the Ariane Space Program began. Now, we have telecoms and hispasats. I count those because they're dual missions. They had military payloads. Telecoms, hispasats, Skynets, and Helios. Of all those 14 launches that we've done, how many, before tonight... Francoise Bouzita, the young lady there, uh, Air and Space Secretary, Secretary General. Secretary General, Air Space. The Les question again. The parameters are stable and the trajectory is normal. If I can get it in. The question is, before tonight's launch, how many of the military launches were double military payloads? I know you know the answer. It's an easy one. See how many out there read the website. Again, question number 139. How many, how many of the military launches before tonight were double launches, were military charters? I'll give you the answer in a minute. Five, minutes de propulsion. Five more minutes to go in the third stage burn. And while those minutes are burning away, take a look at the uh, Skynet sat, and we'll be back with the answer. Skynet 4F is the final spacecraft in the current line of military communication satellites built by Astrium for the UK Ministry of Defence and NATO. The last of the three Stage 2 spacecraft to be launched, it will join Skynet 4D and E, launched in 1998 and 1999, to extend the operational life of the current Skynet system and enhance its operational performance. All three satellites are to be delivered in orbit on station and fully operational. After in-orbit testing has been completed, Astrium hands the satellite over to the Dans Ministry of Defense. In designing the Skynet Stage 2 spacecraft, advantage was taken of technological advances and proven mechanisms to increase the flexibility, performance and reliability of the secure communication system. Introduction of antenna pointing mechanisms allows high power spot and regional beams to be steered anywhere over the visible hemisphere, giving immediate support to unexpected out of area operations. Tunable UHF with an increase in transponder power and a new UHF antenna designed by AEA technology enhances communications with mobile terminals. While greater power on the SHF transponders and revised channel bandwidths both increase the amount of traffic current and improve performance with small tactical and man-portable terminals. Right, 16 minutes into the launch, a little bit about the Seacrawl uh, satellite. So, uh, Mr. Start from uh, Astrium. It's uh, part of a system developed for the Italian MOD to establish uh, communication links throughout Italy, also a wider area, including other parts of Europe, the Mideast and West Africa. CEO of the Astrium Group, Mr. Collier. Italy's first Italian, sorry, Italy's first military satellite. Uh, the Italians also had an, uh, were involved in the Helios bird, but this is the first dedicated Italian satellite developed by CTAB, the Alenia Spazio Telespazio Fiat Avio. Keith Smith, you can see, the UK Defence Ministry. The contract was signed with Arian in 97. Il reste deux minutes de propulsion. Tous les paramètres bord sont normaux et la trajectoire est normale. Two minutes left for the third stage burn. Uh, Arian has launched all of Italy's uh, Italsats and uh, mil military 
devoted satellites. There is the Artemis, which is coming up, set to go in Ariane 5. That's later this year, also with by uh, Alenia. Skynet. A few details about Skynet. The last of the group, the last of six. The bids for the five series are in. They went in last week, I believe. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, we were told by the Astrium people today that uh, that contract will include ground stations. Pierre Bardier says there's a minute and a half left in the third station. Acquisition de la télémesure lanceur par la station de Libreville au Gabon. Uh, we've been picked up by our final tracking station. Il reste moins d'une minute de propulsion. Which is uh, in Libreville in Gabon, west coast of Africa. On the uh, cursor screen there, X H10, extinction. That means H10 is another name, a code name for the third stage. Above that sea crawl, that's the point where that satellite will be separated and higher up the uh, separation moment for Skynet. Skynet, uh, bigger, more powerful than the uh, stage one group. Plus que 30 secondes de propulsion. There is uh, Jean-Jacques Dordain, who's going to be um, taking over from Frederick Enstrom at ESA in charge of the launch uh, direction. Uh, busy year for the ESA people because they got the ministerial meeting coming up in November, deciding on a lot of questions on the future of the Ariane program, and that's Mr. Dordain's domain. Coming up on end of the third stage burn, which you'll hear from the DDO shortly. Extinction du troisième étage. There's the third stage burnout. Début de la manoeuvre d'orientation du composite au bénéfice de Cicral. And we've gone into what we call, call the ballistic phase. Yeah, since uh, we have no more propulsion, we are into orbit in this moment. With the third stage and the two payload, we are uh, reorienting this uh, upper composite, as we call it, to the right position in order to separate the first payload, in this case Sikral. The orientation uh, ballistic phase is different from one payload to another. La manoeuvre d'orientation se poursuit normalement. And this going on normally. Yeah. Uh, you can have spin or not, according to the satellite. In this case... Uh, one is and one isn't tonight, yeah? There is one uh, spin maneuver for Skynet and uh, with no spin uh, for Sikral which will be uh, separated going on with the orientation maneuver which we secret will be uh, separated fin de la manoeuvre d'orientation end of the orientation we wait for the separation announcement in few seconds that you hear from the DDO as well There we have it. Separation of the first payload tonight for the Italian MOD. Happy moment for, <laughs> for the Seacral people who <laughs> look uh, relieved. Seacral, uh, well, there's a good shot. Two happy men. Uh, before we uh, get to the Skynet separation, I want to ask you about the... Uh, what the composite is doing now. Just before we go to that, though, Pierre Michele, now that Sikarella has separated the, what they call in-flight operations, the first acquisition will be at plus 23 minutes. That's coming up very shortly at the Malindi station in uh, La Kenya. La phase d'orientation se poursuit normalement. The uh, solar ray deployment at plus two hours and 40 minutes. First apogee burn in this bipropellant uh, engine taking place at 36 hours and 51 minutes after the liftoff. So what's happening now? We're running up to uh, la deuxième manoeuvre d'orientation. What's going on up there? We are still on, on the same orbit. We're reorienting uh, the composite uh, to the right position to separate Skynet. But before, we will have the separation of the mini Spelda cover, which is the structure between uh, the upper and the lower 
payload. And uh, we will see on the graphic computer simulation. Uh, Acquisition par la station de Malindi au Kenya. Yeah, the Malindi station has just picked us up. Separation du Capo Spelda. There's the separation so, of Spelda you mentioned. How long, how long, how long do you have to go before the uh, separation of the uh, of Skynet? Separation Skynet in about three minutes from now. Three more minutes. Oh, you want to answer your quiz question while you're waiting? Début de la troisième manœuvre d'orientation au bénéfice de Skynet 4F. Mm -hmm. So you see the top of the satellite since the Spelda cover has been separated. Right. Three minutes to go. Did you uh, did you think about my question? Yeah, I think about it. How many how many uh, military satellite launches until tonight? La manœuvre d'orientation se poursuit normalement. Have been double launches. Well. What do you say? As long as I remember, I, I think it can be the first tonight, since Helios was a single, I remember. The other, I was too young, <laughs> I don't remember. You but keep saying that. I think it's the, thir the first one. Is that your final answer? Yeah, it is. Well, Pierre McKay, in all the years I've worked for you, this is the first time you've got the right answer. Congratulations. Uh, Folks, fine. for all you who guessed, this de la is tonight is the very first double military launch that we've put up the telecoms and the Skynets all went up with Astros and Utelsats and uh, uh, Hispasats, uh, Skynet 4E went up with an Arabsat, Skynet 4B and 4C with Astros and Utelsats. These military launches go all the way back to flight number 10 on the first Ariane 3 launcher in August of 84. And interestingly enough, one name of, of uh, Satellite Builder is repeated throughout <coughs> every one of those launchers and the name is Astrium. Of course, uh, Télécommande du satellite par lanceur. in its previous avatars as Matra, then the British Aerospace and MMS, Matra Marconi Space, builders for every one of the military satellites launched by Ariane. Hispasats, Telecom, Skynets, and Helios. So congratulations. Anybody who got the right answer, give us a call up here at 35862, and Pierre McKayley will send you his check for $1.39. And one bottle of champagne paid by Joshua. Right. <laughs> One minute before the expected separation time, and we will see normally on the simulation a spin maneuver, since in this case we have a spin maneuver for separation. And the first satellite we did not, that is right. Because we have, uh, now why is that? Uh, it, 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 it depends on the payload. In the sequel uh, case, uh, it is uh, separated in the right position to open the solar arrays as soon as possible on the right position with respect to the sun. So you don't need a spin separation. Twenty seconds. You hear the DDO calling out the Skynet separation, and you will probably hear. Début de mise en rotation du composite. Spin maneuver. It is a slow spin, 30 degrees per second. Believe me, even if it is not on, on the screen. <laughs> separation Skynet 4F. And we have the separation Skynet. And a lot of happy people. Yeah, the crowd very politely holding all applause until both satellites were were separated. We uh, we're gonna have an exchange of ties here. Looks like. <laughs> well, a lot of happy people here tonight. The champagne and the uh, cigars will be, of course, forthcoming. We're uh, gonna go to the speeches from our principals as soon as they are ready. Uh, probably Jean-Marie Luton, Arian Space Chair, and. Um, Mr. Carlier, Smith, Miniti, and Verilio for the uh, satellite people. The in-flight operations for Skynet, first acquisition at a place called Reef in the Indian Ocean at about plus 27 minutes. That's not too far from now. Second ground station at Guam. Then the spin-ups. Uh, we'll come back to that, but for now, take a look at the first of what may be two or three launch replays. We'll be back. And Tous les paramètres 
dans son normand. Those shots of the replay were taken from another camera at a site called Toucan, which is a lot nearer to the to the launch base, about uh, four kilometers, roughly. We were saying the uh, the uh, in-flight ups for uh, Skynet. The first burn, the AKM burn, the Apogee motor burn, will come at the seventh orbit. Then despin and deployment of solar rays at uh, plus 83 hours. I think we're ready to go to Ariane Space Chair Jean-Marie Luton, who will be followed by the other principals in the satellite people. Monsieur Luton, over to you. One more success for Ariane 4. You never get used to it. Tonight launch all the special position in Ariane's history. Since it is the first time the European launcher has carried out, has carried two European military satellites on this one single mission. This is a concrete proof that the Ariane system has met the political and strategical goal set back in 1973 of giving Europe and independent access to space. So our success is reached tonight to the satisfaction of two important European governmental customers. I would like to congratulate our friends from the British MOD and Astrium for their continuous confidence in Ariane, and the Italian MOD and CITAB for the launch of a first dedicated telecom satellite, CICRAL. Italy is a pillar of the Ariane program, and Italy deserves this success. None of us needs to be reminded that Ariane space owes a lot of the study commitment of the European governments in ESA program. At this point, I would like to say a friendly word to our friends from of the other side of the pound in Europe. I know that this launch has been closely followed in Rome, Italy so. Buongiorno a tutti i nostri amici italiani. Auguriamo lunga vita al vostro satellite. I know that we have also have a lot of British friends following us in Stevenage. UK as well. I can assure you that Iron Space is very proud to have well served you today. Tonight's launch, which is the second success of the year, to be recorded for Ariane 4 in 2001, gives the launcher the credit of 61 successes in a row. A new world record for commercial launch. Tonight's success is also a celebration of European space industry. Almost all this community has, communi has contributed to, to the tonight achievement. Alena Spazio, Fiatavio, Telespazio, Astrium, and all the European companies involved in the Ariane programs, along with the CNES and C CNES CLG and Ariane Space teams, all together, they made the true European achievement possible. We all know we will make many more success possible in the future. Thank you very much. Buonasera. Io penso che dopo le emozioni di stasera ci resta ben poco da dire. Eh, io voglio ringraziare i nostri amici di Ariane Space per aver fatto quello che dovevano. Adesso tocca a noi eh, prendere il controllo del satellite e portarlo a fare quello che è stato previsto che faccia. 
E io cedo subito la parola al rappresentante del MUD, il ministro Minniti, che credo che voglia anche lui unirsi a me nel ringraziare i nostri amici di Ariane Spass. Un grande grazie di cuore per il successo che abbiamo raggiunto questa sera, i momenti di tensione prima del lancio hanno reso questo successo ancora più significativo e bello, una cooperazione importante in campo europeo che ha visto la partecipazione importante del mio Paese, dell'Italia, attraverso tre grandi aziende italiane, Alenia Spazio, Fiat Avio e Telespazio. Un grazie di cuore per l'assistenza e per il lavoro comune che si è fatto e per l'importante risultato che questa sera abbiamo raggiunto. Grazie di cuore e io mi auguro che questa collaborazione così importante che oggi ha prodotto un risultato così significativo possa continuare nel nome di una collaborazione europea. Grazie. Many thanks and congratulations to Ariane Espace for this superb launch and we are, we are used to uh, exciting success, one more. Congratulations to you. You will uh, let me uh, express as well uh, congratulations to our team of people. They are in Portsmouth and Stephen Edge are listening to, to us and I would like to extend a warm message of congratulations to you guys. Uh, very well done. And now let me hand over to uh, Kay Smith, uh, who is represents the Minister of Defense of the UK and uh, who would like to, to say a few words. Right? Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. As I fear I'm speaking last, I shall be quick. Um, I'm delighted and over the moon by uh, what has been achieved this evening. I've just been told that we have telemetry from the satellite at Diego Garcia. That's obviously great news. My thanks to Ariane Spass, again, a great success for European space. Two years ago, I was privileged to be here for the launch of Skynet 4E. Obviously a success. 13 years ago, I must be getting old, I was involved actually in the launch of Skynet 4B again on an Ariane 4 launcher. Ariane 4 continues to be a model of consistency, long may it live. Congratulations and good luck to the Sikral team, of course. The successful launch of Skynet 4F secures for the UK additional operational flexibility and capacity for UK armed forces Normally. wherever they are deployed and will preserve the UK SATCOM capability well into the middle of this decade. My thanks to Astrium, to the teams that have worked so hard on the Skynet programme over nearly 20 years at Portsmouth and at Stevenage. What you have achieved, I believe, is a great testament to your skills and to your professionalism. And if I could just pick out three people who have been absolute giants in this programme and the Skynet programme, that is, and who have really seen it through at times, difficult times. My personal thanks go to Paul Down and David Cross of Astrium and Dennis Williams of my own team. Their contribution has been immense. We need people like that to see programs like this through. Thank you. Il me reste maintenant now. à vous donner All I have to do is just give you the date for the next uh, launch. The next launch will be Ariane 5 at the beginning of March. During this time, we are going to change launch directors within the European Space Agency. I'd like to thank uh, Frédéric Engström, who has been a long-term supporter. He's been like a Viking. He has fought for our program and uh, for the success of Europe in this area. So let's applaud him before he leaves. <laughs> 